Hey, this is Edwin Dearborn, another edition of Growth Driven. And today I'm with a good friend of mine, Kevin Capel, who is an expert at helping hey, practices. Huh? We got to start again. It's it's Capel. Capel? Yep. Well, we're live. So that's the price of that's <laughs> okay, cool. That's the price, man. <laughs> All right. So hey, I, got I got no problem with that. With Kevin Capel, you know, I I look at the L and the E and I get dyslexic. I've been called an awful lot worse, so don't worry about it. <laughs> That's both of us. Well, here we go on Growth Driven. All right, now that I've got your name right. <laughs> This is what I love about live streaming. Live streaming is about, you know, just doing it and rolling right over it. Kevin, you are the owner of Jet PT Billing. You've helped physical therapists make sense of their billing, which I know having worked in chiropractic, billing can be a major headache for practices. So first we're going to talk about that. And then I know down the line you're going to go into other industries potentially vets and uh, dentists and chiros and, you know, who knows where you'll take the brand. But I know right now you primarily concentrate on physical therapists and billing. So can you tell me your backstory, how you even got to this point? You yourself were in physical therapy. Uh, that's correct. That, and Edwin, thanks for having me here. This is a pleasure. Um, yeah, the backstory is a kind of a long one, but uh, I started out as an athletic trainer, was not satisfied, ended up going back to physical therapy school and um, worked for another organization, a large organization in the Midwest and kind of got bored with it, decided to open my own practice with another business partner. And um, we did that for uh, about six or seven years. And during that time, we knew we didn't know what we were <laughs> doing about running a business. And we ended up seeking out some help from consult from consultants. And um, after being with them for a little while, they asked me if I would be interested in helping them help some of their clients. And that sounded really cool. And um, so I started doing that just kind of as a side gig, a little here and a little there. And I found out I was really enjoying doing that. And um, to the fact of I decided to sell my business interests to my business partner and joined that consulting firm. And I did that for a year and a half. Um, the problem with it was that um, my wife was in Minnesota and I was in Florida. And, <laughs> and that gets to be a difficult commute and it's kind of hard to make things work right um, from that distance. Um, but during the time when I was consulting, actually, let me back up a step. When I was in private practice, my business partner and I drew straws and he got the part of the financial package that paid the bills. And I got the part that said, I'm responsible for the income. And at the time it was like, oh my God, did I get screwed on that deal? He got the easy end of it. But in the long run, it forced me to really learn what had to happen in a practice and um, how, to, how to put the pieces in place to be able to go from the very start to the very end with a, with a patient and a patient and account and, and generate income. And so when I was consulting, that seemed to be all I was doing was I was helping our clients with their billing. I did an awful lot of office visits and went in and kind of cleaned up their areas and put procedures and processes into place to help them handle that on their own. And so when it was time for me to, um, to stop playing around in Florida and go back to my wife in Minnesota, it was like, okay, I need a new game to play. I think I'll probably do a billing service because that's what I've been doing. And I had, I had been in so many of our clients' offices and seen pieces that worked, and I saw a lot of pieces that didn't work. And it's like, you know what? Mm. I experienced the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to funnel out all the bad stuff, and I'm going to take all the good pieces and try to put that together into one service and offer that to physical therapy clients. And, and so the, the benefit is that I have seen a lot of things that work and don't work. I have been in their shoes. I was a physical therapist. I was a private practice owner. So I have a lot of different viewpoints other than just being uh, the owner of a billing service. 
Um, and that allows me to spend time with my staff to help them see what's happening on the other end with our clients so that they have a little better understanding of what they're up against and why this particular thing might keep happening and how we can help them fix that. Um, so that's kind of my backstory on how I got there uh, or got here. Story. And um, yeah, it's, it is what it is. I'm here. You're alive. You survived. Absolutely. You know what? I, I, here's some key takeaways that I want to recap. Number one, you just jumped into business. You didn't wait for all the knowledge and experience to kick in. And I think that's a problem with a lot of business people is they delay to get everything just perfect before they get into business, where for you, it was, it was baptism by fire. You exactly. just went in regardless of what you knew. Number two, the luck of the draw is you got billing, <laughs> right? Literally, the luck of the draw. But you used a great phrase, is it forced you to learn it. And I think there's no better way to learn something than just putting yourself in the boiling pot. <laughs> And learning how to cook, and and not get burned. Um, and the and I think the other takeaway is what you add. You said earlier you're just not another billing service, quote unquote, because you've been a PT, you've gone through that bat baptism of fire, you figured out a couple and there's a couple keywords you used processes and procedures. It's not just. Every week you're winging it and going, here's what no. you, you you wrote up some hats probably in checklists or whatever software, however you put it together so that it was a systematic, predictable operation. Is that true? That's exactly true. And and yeah, the, the interesting thing about, about the billing process is there are a certain number of steps that if you do them and you know them and you know what's supposed to happen in each of them, it's really pretty easy because because you know it. It's like if I do this and then this, the, the picture I like to put in my mind or in someone else's mind, and, and this really dates myself, but it, for anybody listening that knows of a slinky, remember that little thing that you oh, put yeah. down the stairs? We're dating ourselves, yes. We really are, but <laughs> the billing process is like a slinky. It's It's got to follow every single step going down, and if it gets bogged up on one step, it's going to stop. And if it ends up jumping a step, it's not going to work there either. It's going to crash and burn. So that's kind of the mental picture that I have of the billing process. It's one step at a time. And there are sometimes little sub steps within each one to do. But if you follow that and you know what to expect and what should happen at each one of those, there's no reason you can't come out on the other end with what you're looking for, that's which great. in this case is cash. There you go. And if you look at the bottom tick here, it's jetptbilling.com. For those that are listening here on a podcast, either later, it's jet, J E T P T billing.com. And uh, you can find out about Kevin's services. How long have you been doing this? Um, I have been doing this as a billing service since 2009. So, okay, years. okay so you got a good amount of experience. You've probably seen some evolutions within the insurance billing industry in the last um, years. Yeah, typically when you think of evolution, you think of things getting better over time. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure things have evolved or revolved, but or devolved. Um, yeah, there's been an awful lot of change, and um, and it's typically been change to make things more difficult. It's making the process more complex all the time. And, and that's the challenge with trying to weed through that is something's changing every year and sometimes it's changing quarterly. Wow. I think that's even more reason why if you're a physical therapist or, and I know that you could probably get into other industries doing their billing, why having someone like you is vital because I've seen having worked with a lot of doctors and physical therapists over the years in marketing and such, they try to shove various functions to family members like wives. Uh, and, yeah. And, and the wives do it because we're going to save money, quote unquote, so we don't have to hire somebody, but they don't know what they're really doing. They jump into the cesspool of regulations and government, uh, you know, 
laws and HIPAA and this and that. And next thing you know, uh, they're bringing the they're bringing the billing home with them, and they're fighting at home because they don't really get to separate out their hats. That's exactly correct. In fact, it's interesting that you mentioned that. I I just spoke to a couple um, about a month ago that were um, they were they were relocating to a new state. They were starting up a new practice, and um, that was their plan. And they reached out to me to try to help help teach the wife the processes and procedures. Right. And um, it didn't take very long for them to realize that, hey, hey this, this is not going to work. Um, we're, Teaching we're gonna, wife is we're, not the we want you to work. help us, and, and we'll use, the, we'll use um, my wife to um, kind of be the liaison between you and our office. But, yeah, um, but yeah we don't, we don't want to do this. <laughs> well, Evan, you know, it's really interesting. We talk about this. I think this is probably the crux of the matter in a lot of practices. And it's this. I'm talking to a financial planner, one of my interviews yesterday, and he said the number one reason why couples fight is because of money. Mm. Yeah. So now you bring in the practice money and the personal money into the couple's lives. Now you got two ways for them to fight. And, and when the personal money is reliant on the professional money, Oh, baby, it's like uh, uh, groceries. Wow, how are we going to handle that? Um, yeah, and and you know, a lot of it is just from the unknown. Anytime there's something we face that we don't know about, we always make it worse than what it is. We expect it to be worse, and yep. there's so much unknown in this industry. And I honestly believe it's intentional. The insurance companies are constantly changing things, Good and. Point. And and doing things different than the other pay, other insurance company who does something different than the other, and there's so much unknown as to um, are we going to get paid? Are they are they going to reimburse it? Are they going to reimburse the way they should? Do they even cover this patient? Um, do we do we need to collect a copay or a coinsurance? Do we need an authorization prior to it? It's like oh, oh, oh it's crazy, yeah. So many variables, you know, you don't really think about that until you get deep into the weeds and the details, you know, as, as the saying goes, the devil's in the details. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like there's a lot of devils <laughs> in those details. <laughs> and there's a lot of devils, period. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and having worked with insurance, I know that they can purposely make it complex so as to not, unfortunately, let's just state the truth, not pay you. Exactly. Not exactly. When, when, you, when you really step back a little bit and look at the industry, and, and, and I don't mean the insurance industry, I mean healthcare related to insurance, mm -hmm. it, it's, um, we, have, we have the patient or subscriber that is paying for insurance, either they're paying for it or their employer is, which means they are. And, and then we have the insurance company out there trying to hang on to as much money as they can because they have, um, they have shareholders. They have, they they're have, private business. Business. yeah, they, they have their private business. They're trying to keep ROI. Exactly. And so right. they're doing everything they can to hang on to the money as long as they can and not pay for it. And, and they're hoping that, the ignorance of the practice or the people that are handling that piece of it don't follow up to challenge them and appeal and do whatever they need to do to actually really make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do, that they're, they're obligated and are paying their obligations per the contract with the subscriber or the patient uh, or the employer. Um, they, are, they are intentionally trying to not pay. Yeah, I mean they they don't make money by paying, they make money by keeping your 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 money that you pay to them. It's it's kind of like Vegas. They don't they don't make money when you win. That's correct. <laughs> they give you the allure of the idea of winning and maybe you yep. get a temporary win, but it, you know, the house always wins as the saying goes. So now, you know, I think now that I think about this, probably one of the barriers you run into in getting people is like, okay, they see your services as an expense initially, like, oh, it's going to cost me money 
That's the initial pain point. But in reality, the bigger loss for them is the lost income they're not making due to their ignorance. That's correct. Um, yeah, it's easy to factor in the, you know, the costs that they have on their end, the hard costs of the the facility, the the mm -hmm. software and hardware, the labor that they're paying somebody to handle that in house. Um, but you're exactly right. It's the lost income that is um, almost uncalculable. It's it's really hard to put a figure on that. Um, but but when you when you really understand again the the processes you realize that there are there are metrics that one can use to have a better understanding of that and and sometimes you can use that as a an industry benchmark more times than not it's just an internal benchmark that we can track over time and and we'll know we'll we'll be able to look at that and see what their AR looks like and how old it is and what's their collection ratios and a lot of different numbers. Yeah, that's good that you you take those metrics because once they have that aha moment on the amount of lost revenue, yeah, then of course it starts to make financial sense. Moreover, what's the ROI on having happiness between you and your, your wife? Correct. I mean, what's... What's the value? What's the price tag on that? So, Correct. A, Kevin and his company are going to come in and just take this whole nightmare off of our plate, do it efficiently, do it right. We'll end up making more money. But number two, I won't have to fight with my internal staff or more likely my wife or my sister or my daughter or whoever I've assigned to this and save a lot of family uh, strife as well. Can I add number three? Yeah, please. You you have um, you have a billing service that has been there and done that. Been a PT, been a provider, has been a consultant that can also help manage the practice a little bit by providing some advice along the way because of having been there and done that, and, wow. and help you look at your management operation that that stretches a little bit more than just the billing, but also starts looking at. How our individual providers are doing, and how maybe how is there is there a strategy that we can start increasing the number of units that we're billing that's going to increase our collection per visit? Um, that that I have done with you know with many clients in the past. So um, you know, so yeah, that's that's actually more powerful now that I think about it, Kevin. That you bring that up here. You, this is what I think, just from a, a branding and marketing. It's like there's there's billing services and then there, there's billing services that can show you how to bill even more. Not obviously illegally. We want to, Correct. but they're probably because you've consulted and you've been a PT, there's not just the lost income that you, that you can get them to see. There's also the lost income of things that they've never, that they've yeah. never really involved themselves in as a business model so there you are, not just, okay, I'll, I'll collect more money from what you're already doing, but did you know there's more you could be doing? Exactly. How can we, how can we keep all your providers as efficient as possible and know when the right time to hire a new one is and so forth? Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of behind the scenes stuff that can happen there. Yeah, plus I'm sure you've got some tips on, you know, how to network, how to market, how to advertise, you know, just because that's the other side of, income is how do we get the person in initially to even be billed correct and okay. and if it's something that i that i don't know i i know people that know yeah <laughs> so true yeah so you become kind of you become kind of like a swiss army knife if you will you're not just this one blade although it be a good blade to have having your billing right, but I've got all these other tools attached to my blade that can actually aid in value. I think that's something that, you know, in your presentations, I, I'm sure you already accentuate that, but I, I never really saw that until now. So um, I think that's, that's a great way to really let people know why you're different and more valuable than just your average billing service. When you um, sit down with a physical therapist or a group of physical therapists kind of take me through a basic scenario 
of where they're at and how you bring them through to the other side in terms of now getting their billing to be more efficient? Well, first of all, the probably the biggest thing is just the, the ability to be able to confront what's really happening right now. Um, and, and it's surprising how many practice owners have put the blinders on because they don't want to look in that billing office. They don't want to know what's going on. And, and as long as there's a reasonable amount of money in the bank account each week, they're happy. And um, so that's kind of the first piece of it is, okay, here is some information that we need to be able to obtain from your billing system so that we can adequately assess where you currently are. And, and then it's really just an eye opening of, uh, opportunity to show them that, okay, here's where you are. Here's, here's kind of what the norm is um, and, and handle that difference. And that difference, you know, if it's a big difference, then we really need to look at what is going on in your office. How, yeah. what are your systems? What are your, what are your procedures and what are your, um, your, it, your check and balance? Cause yeah. I mean, we've had situations where money was being embezzled and they had no clue. And so it's like, wow, we, you really need some systems in. In fact, oftentimes it, it can be as simple as let's look at your financial, um, uh, financial policy that you put forth for your patients to read and sign and agree to. Uh, oftentimes there's weaknesses in that in itself that can cost a lot of money down the road. So um, it's the full, it's the full thing of let's find out where you are and look at your, your entire system. And, um, and now let's see, do you have the staff to be able to ramp this up or do we need to look at the potential of maybe you're better off hiring someone else or outsourcing it to somebody that can handle that outside your office and, um, provide you better accountability on a regular basis? Yeah, I, I can see what you're doing. What you're really doing is you're doing a full audit of that portion of their organization from just getting to look at it. It's like people looking at their taxes. It's just like, oh, I don't even want to look at my taxes. They don't file them. And then finally, you know, <laughs> they, know they have to, right? Yep. Yep. And so you just go in and you look at not only getting them to see, just begin to look at it for the most part, but the processes, the systems, the policies, can they scale? Where are they missing money? What other things could they be billing for? Potential embezzlement, uh, inefficiencies, the whole nine yards. And then obviously the goal is you just take that burden from them because you have the systems and the processes and the scalability that they don't necessarily. That's correct. Um, yeah, it's, it's really easy for us to handle it when you've got a staff that is there. So, you know, the, the, the downside is always if you have your own staff, what happens if they leave or Ooh. what happens if they're sick for an extended period of time? You are, you are totally dependent on them having to be there all the time. Whereas when it's outsourced, um, you know, to a company that's got enough employees to handle it, they can handle it. They can always pick up. Even if, even if the person is gone that handles that account, there are plenty of other people on staff to be able to pick up that load and, and get it done on a day-to-day -day basis. Great point. How many times have we had, have we seen a practice or a business where they had a star player and then <laughs> the star player picks up their tent and goes? Yep, exactly. Or gets pregnant or moves because the husband gets redeployed, you know, to Iraq or, you know, I mean, there's a million different reasons why people can leave, but and then all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, the business was great until, you know, Michael Jordan left. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a big change. That's a slap in the face. And, and it's, um, it, it can happen to anybody. It can happen to anybody. It really is. Um, it, it's, you know, when, when, a, when a owner loses a provider, the, the owner always says, well, I'll step in. I can I can drop back down and go handle that, mm -hmm. um, but but when you lose that billing person, no one else usually no one else has that know how to be able to do that, um, and, and it's it's easy to get claims out the door. It's not so easy to get the money in the door and get it posted where it needs to go so that things aren't messed up, 
And the hardest thing is the follow-up. What happens to those claims that don't get paid? Those are the ones that typically, even with good staff, typically get brushed under the rug. And, um, and those are the ones that fall into the aging buckets in the AR and just keep moving farther out in time and don't get followed up on. And pretty soon they're past timely filing dates or, or appeal dates. And it's, it's right off time. Ugh. Yeah. I, I worked in a chiropractic office and our billing gal was the most persistent bulldog. And that's what she had to be. Exactly. I mean, you know, it's like if you didn't have, and I remember when she left, it was just panic at the disco. You know what I mean? It was just like, she can't leave. She's like, she's <laughs> keeps us fed. Like, right. Example of, you know, now you don't have to depend on your Michael Jordan or your Randy Moss to always catch the touchdown or make the basket because you've got you to do that. In the in two, and I'm sure that you saw a lot of crazy ups and downs when the physical therapy business here in 2020. Yes, yeah, yeah. We, we haven't recovered. We still haven't recovered. In fact, we're we're starting to see things kind of kind of fall back down a little bit again because of all of the the scare that's going on with um, uh, you know states closing things down and and people not wanting to go out again because of the high volume of of virus cases and stuff yeah it it was um it was really weird and it's it's been a um it's been a unique recovery it's been some of our largest practices or clients have been the ones that have recovered the least best and some of our smaller ones are the ones that have done really well and exceeded what they were doing before. So it, it's really been um, different. It's been a head scratcher to try to figure out why, why are they doing so well and why are they not doing so well? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. My, my assumption, and I could be wrong, is smaller brands tend to be more agile you know, there's, I'm not saying that's always the case, right? But there is that agility factor of, you know, smaller brands can pivot and go, let's do this, where bigger brands can get it a little bit more bureaucratic, or, you know, at least set in their ways of like, well, we, we've never done it that way before. Yeah, that's possible. The other, the other thing that I've kind of had attention on, I, I agree, you're totally right on that. And that's been proven many times. I, I it, it seems that there's been a trend of the more rural practices to have rebounded quicker mm. and the ones that are more metro area yeah, I can probably see have more media hype they have i mean there's more people so people are in contact with more people and they're afraid because they that's all they hear about and in the rural areas uh, there's just more space i think there's you know the people aren't packed in so much yeah i also think you go to rural areas i think there's also kind of a a grit yep. about life yep you know, it's like, I remember surviving the big flu of 72. Yep. We got this. You know, they're just. This ain't nothing. This, yeah. They're just a little bit more thick skinned about living, you know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think it's probably a combination of factors. So going forward, 2021, tell me some of your expansion plans on what, you, what you're going to be doing to grow. Well, we're we're really kind of spreading our wings here. We've got some we've got some things happening here from a from a promotion standpoint. Uh, we've got some things in the in the works that are going to uh, put us in front of some other areas of the medical world other than just physical therapy. Okay. Uh, we, we certainly um, do have some occupational therapists currently. We do have a couple chiropractors. We do some acupuncture kind of stuff. Um, but the expectation is that we're going to move out into a bigger picture of the medical area. Um, and, and who knows, that could be ophthalmology, it could be general medicine and, and um, you know, general practitioners. Um, we're, we're kind of, uh, we're, we're putting some things in place that are going to put us out there and we're going to see based on kind of some surveying and so forth where we end up going the most, where we okay. put our ducks. I like that. You're you're basically diversifying the portfolio. Exactly. It's um, 
Well, it's time. I've been wanted to do this for a long time, and um, I have really um, had an interest in new lines. I I'm not going to say I get bored doing the same thing, but there's just something. There's something I really like about creating more, creating something that's new and different, and and that's probably my next thing. Is like, okay, uh, we're we're good at what we're doing with physical therapy. Let's move into a new area and um, and have fun with that. Yeah, there's nothing like besting a new challenge to keep keep one excited. Exactly. Yep. So you can work with chiropractors. Absolutely. Uh, what are some other industries that if they came to you right now and if they were listening or listening to the future, they could contact jetptbilling.com and, and, and take your services? Well, certainly um, I have interests in ophthalmology and dental. Um, if there are any, um, you know, medical kind of niche things, maybe podiatry, um, that's not very far away from the therapies. Um, it's true. Um, I, it's I'm I'm really wide open. I I have I have no back off on doing something new. I love the challenge of, well, okay, I haven't done that before, but uh, you know what? I've learned to do an awful lot of stuff on my own already. I'll do that again. Yeah. Plus, billing. I mean, regulations is regulations. There's a drill. Maybe you've got to learn specific codes and things like that. But but 95 percent of the processing. Okay. Uh, of how you do it is how you do it. Exactly. The processing does not change. It's still, yeah. this has to happen, this has to happen, and this has to happen. And, and the, uh, the metrics that one would keep would be the same. It's yeah. just, Absolutely. it's just plugging in a, a different, a different set of something. Yeah. It's people receiving healthcare and then they need to be billed and then the billing goes out and you need to collect it. So exactly. Yeah, whether you're repairing a Volkswagen or a Mercedes, it's got holes and doors and yeah. it's got to be fixed. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, that's great. Hey, uh, Kevin, do you know that you have talked for over a half an hour and I can continue to go and I am going to continue to go. Just remember when we talked to earlier, you know, am, you, am I going to keep you going? The answer is yes. <laughs> Yeah, you did an awesome job of that. Yeah, that was easy. Yeah, it was easy. So, um, okay, so you're going to go into these other things, kind of as a as a practice owner. Kind of what what is the primary thing that motivated you, and how did that carry forward into your building business? How how do you see that that purpose is translated to this this thing you've been doing for eleven years? Well, what what motivated me was helping people. I, I, no matter what I'm doing, I am the happiest when I see somebody with a smile on their face and I have been the one that's put it there. That yeah. is, that's better than a paycheck. That gives me a warm fuzzy and I can kind of start to feel my eyes welling up just talking about it right here. But, just an onion. <laughs> but, but what, but what moved me on from that was when I started helping out with consulting, it was like, you know what, when I was a practice owner, I was able to help one person at a time. Mm -hmm. When I started consulting, I was helping one practice at a time. But how many people were they helping? It was like, wow, I, I am, I'm, I'm now really spreading myself over a much, I'm throwing a much bigger net out there. I am, I'm indirectly helping a ton more people by helping that one practice and, and that owner. And, um, and that's kind of where I'm at with the billing now. It's like, I, now I'm not only helping the practice, I'm still helping their patients because most of the times we are fighting on their behalf to help them get better reimbursement from their insurance company. So, um, and, and I'm helping the practice owners, uh, staff get paid and it's like, you keeping a business alive. Yeah, that's exactly it. We, we are the income manager for the business. Yeah. And I'll tell you keeping, I, I, I posted a few days ago, the small business owner of America who's having to fight all these lockdowns, he's the big American hero of 2020. Yep. Yep. That is, like if, if you're a small business owner and you're keeping that thing open despite hell or high water, mm -hmm. uh, that's heroic in a year like that. Yep. Amen. Hats off to you guys because that's what it's all about. 
It is. So I'm, and I, and you know, it's funny you say that. I kind of feel the same way as a marketeer. It's like, if I can keep the business coming in, okay, I'm not billing, I'm not the billing guy, but if I can keep that new patient flow or that new customer flow coming in and they can somehow get some compensation, maybe that'll keep them alive as a business. It, well, yeah, I mean, that's, um, Without that fuel coming in, there's there's no cash coming in. So that really is the lifeblood of the practice. Is without without new patients coming in, um, there's there's nothing for us to do. <laughs> <laughs> there's no bill. But then again, if we don't do the billing, then there's no money for marketing. It's a exactly. it's really it's a cycle of that organization. Correct. Well, Kevin, I've really really enjoyed our talk. And when you expand into these new fields and you start to have some experience with that. I'd like to ha have you back on the show, maybe four or five, six months from now, you can tell us, you know, where you took it and what happened and all that other stuff. But I, I learned a lot about your industry. I mean, I think this is the most I've ever talked to you about your industry, even though we've known each other for a while. And, and I really see that as a brand, you have that X factor that you can add as a billing individual, as a billing professional, I should say, to the fact that you've been a consultant, you've been a PT, you can add that extra umph, that extra direction. And and I hope that anybody who's watching this now or, you know, I've had my videos found years after they were made, you know, um, I want you guys to reach out to, to Kevin. And again, it's jetptbilling.com. And uh, any final words before we uh, before we end off here? Well, number one, I want to thank you for this opportunity. This has been a pleasure talking to you about this. Yeah. And um, number two is, you know, there's there's no harm in just checking. You know, most practice owners don't really have a barometer to know how well their billing department is, and and um, just reaching out and. You know, asking some questions on, am I doing well? Is should I be concerned? Is there something I can do better? Um, I, that's um, that's free information. I love doing that. Anytime I can help somebody, I'm right, willing to do that. So, all right, guys, if you want some free information, reach out to Kevin. It's been another edition of Growth Driven. Thanks for being here.